small businesses can do great things. In this series of videos, I will explore with you the success stories of small businesses in Australia and what we can learn from them. In this video, I share with you the story of Over the Moon Ice Cream. It's all about ice cream, so stick around and enjoy the sweet treat. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Raymond Huan, and if you own a business, you're interested in business, or you wish to learn more about the tips and tricks on how to operate a business better, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button that you see before you right now. Over the Moo is a dairy-free ice cream business and a brainchild of entrepreneur Alex Hausman. Hausman created his business out of his own personal need. He loves ice cream, as do most of us, but is sadly lactose intolerant, as some of us are. While dairy-free ice cream is available in the market, he felt there wasn't a product that could deliver the indulgence and delicious flavours at an affordable price. Now this led him to develop his own dairy-free ice cream made from coconut milk. And Over the Moon was Hausman's first business. He quickly recognised that he needed money, does that sound familiar? Advice, and also the exposure to make it a success. So he decided to seek funding in Australia's version of the Shark Tank. Now in this show, he received three offers, but eventually walked away without the deal. One of the concerns of the judges in Shark Tank during the Over the Moon pitch was that Hausman had not yet trademarked his recipe. Seeing the wisdom in the judge's advice about owning his own ice cream recipe, he immediately worked on fixing this intellectual property issue after the filming wrapped up. Now, Hausman's main concern with the judge's offers were that they were lower than what he was willing to accept. It was unfortunate that the show was filmed before Over the Moon began appearing at the local supermarket shelves nationwide. Since the judges didn't take into consideration this particular important business milestone, the valuation for Over the Moon was lower than Hausman's own valuation for his own business. As of 2018, Over the Moon is available at 2,200 stores. That includes Coles, Woolworths, and IGA supermarkets. And despite a wide distribution, it maintains a lean business model of just three full-time staff. So what can we learn from Hausman and his business? Hausman was a former marketing consultant, but it proved to be a difficult sell in the beginning. He approached every supermarket and tried hard to convince them to carry his brand on their shelves, starting with independent supermarkets and eventually making strides towards larger chains. His hard work, strategy, and very good ice cream too proved to be a recipe for his current success. Hausman said in an interview once, as I have learned, a successful business is 1% good idea and 99% hard work and commitment. Now this rings through for any business, but more so for operating a business in a very competitive industry. The ice cream industry in Australia is a $1.1 billion market that is dominated by major companies such as Unilever, who owns Waze Ice Cream and over 400 other known brands, and Baskin Robbins. And while Over the Moon is considered a vegan ice cream, Hausman does not consider it as a health product as it contains the same amount of fat and sugar as Ben & Jerry's. This made such an order to deliver the same indulgent flavour as regular ice cream to those with special dietary needs and it's a product that caters to a very special niche. That is, to those who are lactose intolerant or who follow a plant-based diet looking for a sweet, indulgent treat. After Shark Tank, Over the Moon earned a gross profit of $1 million, but its net profit was zero. Hausman's initial spending went to growing and expanding distribution, and he confessed that he was lax with cash flow in the beginning. When he felt this, that this became an issue, he sought advice from other people and created an advisory board. He also took short courses in financial management, which helped. Hausman consistently advises having a tight watch on cash flow in his interviews. He says, I wish I had known earlier how to forecast cash flow better. It's terrible when you put all that effort into growing and promoting the business, then don't have the cash flow to keep up. 
at our worst time, we had literally $45 in our bank account. And all the while, we had thousands of dollars in wages and product expenses every month. Being able to balance growth versus cash in the bank is the most important thing that I've learned regarding starting over the moon. In my video, Allowing Sales to Trump Everything, I share why cash flow management is important and how a fast-growing business experiencing record sales could get into trouble if it does not manage its cash flow properly. Click on the link to find out a little bit more about that. It took Hausman four to five months of research and product development to get his ice cream recipe just right. But despite doing all the work developing the recipe, he initially shared the intellectual property or the IP of the recipes to the manufacturer he worked with. After failing to get a deal on the show and seeing that the ambiguity of the IP could become a costly issue, he immediately took the necessary steps to ensure that he had full ownership of his ice cream. Hausman also knew how much his business was worth in his mind. He was willing to listen to other people, that is the judges of Shark Tank, and was able to make an educated decision on the business value and decided not to take up their offer. He probably knew that his product was going to go onto the shelves of major supermarkets, but yet he could not reveal that to the judges at the time due to the confidentiality of the matter at the time. Now, having said that, I have met business owners who have had inflated values of their businesses that were not based on market valuations. You need to be aware that if there is a difference between your perceived value of the business and how your market values your product, there will be a gap between expectations. If you're interested to know more about what a business has to go through when facing exponential growth, you can download the first chapter of my book from 20K to 2 million in two years, absolutely free here. This chapter talks about the differences between a good and a great business and puts out questions that makes you consider how you can turn your business from good to great. Thank you very much for watching this video and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video very soon.